As Catholics, we know that we need baptism to be saved. This is a universally held belief. What happens to babies that die before they are baptized, or specifically in this case, to babies that are aborted? Now we can understand why Satan wants this so much. He wants to deprive these innocent infants of this tremendous grace that assures us of salvation. We will get into this in today's video, prayers for those babies that have been aborted and have not been baptized, obviously, along with what does the church teach now? Does the church even teach about limbo? You'd be surprised what it has to say. It's very interesting. If you would like to support this channel in any way, please do so through Buy Me A Coffee. Now, this video is in response to my previous video, which got a lot of comments, a lot of emails, with a lot of people being extremely helpful in suggestions. This is a topic that is not talked about because it's seen as controversial, perhaps offensive. The reality is that we are born into a state of original sin. This is nothing personal. This is simply what we have inherited. And just as with an infant in the womb or or after they're born, just because they're cute and wonderful doesn't mean that they don't need vaccines, that they don't need medical care, that they don't have medical issues that we need to take care of out of love for them, not to insult them but out of love for them. Similarly, we want to address spiritual issues, namely original sin. First, let's get into what the church says. And before it even says it, this is this is a most recent document, I believe it was in 2007. And essentially, it allows us to believe what the church has always believed. It adds an element of hope, but it does not forbid for us to pray for these children to be baptized with a prayer that has an imprimatur. I want to speak about this. It's the one that everyone's been e emailing me. Hear what the church has to say and, and hear what it doesn't say. So this is the last two paragraphs in this document that is talking about the hope of salvation for uh, unbaptized infants that die. Within the hope that the church bears for the whole of humanity and wants to proclaim afresh to the world of today, is there a hope for the salvation of infants who die without baptism? carefully reconsider this complex question with gratitude and respect for the response that have been given throughout the history of the church, but also with an awareness that it falls to us to give a coherent response for today. Reflecting within the one tradition of faith that unites the church through the ages, and relying utterly on the guidance of the Holy Spirit whom Jesus promised would lead his followers into all truth, we have sought to read the signs of the times and to interpret them in the light of the gospel. Our conclusion is that the many factors that we have considered above give serious theological and liturgical grounds for hope that unbaptized infants who die will be saved and enjoy the beatific vision. We emphasize that these are reasons for prayerful hope rather than grounds for sure knowledge. Do you see that distinction? There is much that simply has not been revealed to us. We live by faith and hope in the God of mercy and love who has been revealed to us in Christ and the Spirit moves us to pray in constant thankfulness and joy. What has been revealed to us is that the ordinary way of salvation is by the sacrament of baptism. None of the above considerations should be taken as qualifying the necessity of baptism or justifying delay in administering the sacraments. Rather, as we want to reaffirm in conclusion, they provide strong grounds for hope that God will save infants when we have not been able to do for them what we would have wished to do, namely to baptize them into the faith and life of the church. So essentially it's saying we had strong hope, we don't have assurance, this is given to us through baptism. So since there is this room that we don't know, we can logically do something for them. That perhaps the means through which God wants to save them is through our prayers that God always, just like he wants, to he wants us to baptize our children, Jesus doesn't come from heaven and baptize our children. We have to do that work. It's not done for us. Likewise, we are responsible for these, in this case, aborted infants or infants that die without baptism. Here is the following prayer that has an imprimatur. I will give more information. And this was given on July 29th, 1998, Prayer for the Baptism of Aborted Babies. I will conclude with this for your consideration as a beautiful prayer of something that we could do for them. We can also pray for them at Mass in our regular prayers that uh, essentially in the spirit of this prayer, you're going to hear it. It's very beautiful. So hear the quote and then hear the prayer. Today, the blood of innocent children has filled heaven. Their number is too great, too great. The wrath of the Eternal Father is about to fall on mankind. 
Their blood disturbs my agonizing heart and increases my agony. Through his through this prayer, large numbers of innocent unborn babies will be saved. Pray it daily and make it known to the world. Anyone who teaches it will not be lost. Praise God, I have the grace to teach this to you and to those that taught it to me. Thank you. Thank you. May this act of charity on your part be a blessing tremendously that falls upon you and your family. I, with my love and mercy, will protect them from falling into mortal sin. Praise the Lord for this promise. Here's a prayer. Heavenly Father, your love is eternal. In your ocean of love, you save the world through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Now look at your only Son on the cross, who constantly bleeding for love of his people, and forgive your world. Purify and baptize aborted children with the precious blood and water from the sacred side of your Son, Jesus Christ, who hung dead on the cross for their salvation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may they, through the holy death of Jesus Christ, gain everlasting life through his wounds, be healed, and through his precious blood be freed, there to rejoice with the saints in heaven. Amen. That is tremendously beautiful. I cannot think of a more beautiful prayer that is theologically sound, and it's Trinitarian. Nothing better. There you have it, a beautiful prayer for infants aborted or that die otherwise that did not receive the grace of baptism. We take it for granted. Let's not Let's act on it and bring this grace to these beautiful, innocent souls. God bless you, and I will see you in the next one.